Hello and welcome back to the Greenhorn Photo Taker today. A long awaited What Makes This Hike Great from Norvin Green State Forest. I featured Norman Green on this channel many times before. And in fact, I think my favorite video, perhaps of all time, certainly in the last year or so, was the last September installment um, from Norvin Green right after a hurricane came through. Um, and it was just at its best I've ever seen. So check that video out if you ever want to see what inspires me to keep up with this channel. And ever since then, I've been wanting to make a long overdue what makes this hike great for a particular route in the state forest. The state forest is about 5,500 acres in size, uh, nestled in Ringwood and West Milford, New Jersey. It has about 36 trails and really it has varying skill set for everyone. It works for the all-day gnarly hiker. Um, it also works for the family just trying to get out for a few hours on a Saturday afternoon. The park has always been very popular but certainly hit its peak during the pandemic season um, with lots filling up you know by 9 or 10 a.m. on weekends um, throughout the summer. Anecdotally it seems to have lessened off a bit this summer um, when I was there for this particular day, um, I exited the park around 1130 and there was still a decent amount of parking left. So I think um, visitation is down a bit, um, but there's nothing wrong with that. You probably won't get much solitude on this hike unless you start very early, and that's okay. Um, like I said, the park is very large um, and there are certainly quiet times to be had. One other note, I certainly haven't hiked every trail in this park, so if you know of another wonderful route, please let me know down below. This hike in particular navigates several trails, so you really need to keep your wits about you and make sure you're not going in the wrong direction. Even having hiked this probably 10 or 12 times in the past seven years, um, I still occasionally make the wrong turn. <laughs> it's always on the same spot too. So um, there are a lot of twists and turns. Make sure you have your map, make sure you have um, a GPS that helps on your phone to follow your route as well. There's a full route description below, but in summary, the route starts at the New Weiss Visitor Center, ascends up to the Wainoki High Point via Otter Hall Trail, Hewitt Butler Trail, and a bit of the Wainoki Circular Trail. From there, descend back down the high point, descend back down the hill you just climbed, and head to Chickahokee Falls via the Highlands Trail, Karis Hill Trail, and Post's Brook Trail. Here you'll end up at a low point and need to start the climb back up the hill via Wainoki Crest Trail, Outlaw Trail, and then back to the new Weiss Visitor Center via Wainoki Crest and Otter Hole again. I know that is a tremendous amount. Um, which is why you definitely need to have your map with you and you definitely need to have a GPS on your phone or some type of device that can help you follow along. I'd categorize this as a hard seven mile hike with 1500 feet of elevation gain. Um, really thanks in large part due to two 500 foot hills, but I think in general there's a lot of constant small ups and downs throughout the route that keeps the heart pumping too. The terrain is rugged and rarely do you have a moment to walk on flat ground without worrying about tripping over a rock or a root or something else. So what makes this route, this trail, this hike great? I think it's best to categorize um, the positives into three categories. The viewpoints, the waterways, and the trail itself. There are two top-notch viewpoints on the trail. The first is the aforementioned Wainoki High Point, and the second is a rocky outcrop about halfway down Karis Hill. A few other places have nice views as well, but they are generally obstructed um, or have a narrow field of view. Wainoki High Point is absolutely the most common, most popular destination in Northern Green State Forest. It's only about a mile and a half from the new Weiss Visitor Center, so a lot of people just take a trip up to the high point and then back down the hill. Um, it is definitely worth it if that's all you're interested, in, but it is merely one of many highlights on this entire route. The high point is atop a fun but very easy rock scramble, and once you ascend that large rock, you really have 360 degree panoramic views of the entire area. Uh, Wanakee Reservoir, Torn Mountain, Buck Mountain, 
and there are really plenty of nooks and crannies to explore up here as well. It's not a single narrow high point, um, it's really this large piece of exposed uh, bedrock. There are my favorite trees, those pitch pines I always talk about, and of course there is a really uh, majestic view of the New York City skyline um, that on a clear day uh, you can really pick out individual windows on the buildings um, if you have a zoom type of camera or a, a binocular or something. Um, really wonderful to see as well. One World Trade Center is about 29 miles to the south and east of this point. Halfway down Carousel Trail is the second top end vista. Um, I've searched for a name for this spot. I don't know if Carousel refers to this rocky outcrop or it refers to the general landscape. Um, either way, it is a lot of fun. The trail doesn't traverse this hill, but goes right alongside it. You can't miss it. Um, and then it's another small rock scramble. Um, this time, a little bit, I don't want to say dangerous, because anybody who can balance is okay here, but there are uh, drops to both your left and right as you walk up to this, so keep your wits about you. But once you're sitting up there, and once you're perched atop, you have a great view of the Wanakee Reservoir. Um, you can see the New York City skyline still, not quite as good as a view, uh, but really is a wonderful spot to take a water break or even an early lunch. For me, Northern Green is at its finest after a rainy day or early in the rainy season. Um, there are dozens of water features on this route but the majority of them are really only noticeable when the flow is very high. Near the trailhead is Blue Mine Brook with its series of cascades and water features. While there's water in the mid to late summer months, I think it's best to almost consider this uh, a seasonal stream. The real fun begins around mile three when Post's Brook is encountered. It's a swift flowing stream um, with some great twists and turns to it. Um, and it's particularly lovely at this junction between uh, Post Brook itself and one of its tributaries coming in from the north. The highlight though is Chickahokee Falls, um, which is worth a visit all year round. In the full flow months, it is roaring and very loud, um, but then if you happen to encounter it in a low flow, it just gives you an opportunity to cross the stream, get closer, um, and really take some nice pictures of the falls themselves or just relax for lunch, as you can get much more up close and personal um, and see the rivulets coming down the falls and even have access to a small pool that you can wade in um, in the drier seasons. Finally, leave the stream, but not the water behind. As you ascend back up the hill, you'll approach a swamp, but on the way and on that hill are these massive boulder fields, where in the rainy season, there's a tremendous amount of water flowing downhill through this wide area expanse. And within this area, there are dozens, probably scores, of small scenes with either little cascades or little narrow rivulets. Um, it's very picturesque, it's very beautiful. Um, arguably my favorite portion of the trail is this section uphill through those boulder fields. And finally, what makes this hike great is the rugged trail itself. As mentioned, there are many areas of light scrambling and boulder hopping, but there's also intensely beautiful small scenes along the way. There are areas of pine trees, glacial erratics, wispy grass scenes, and numerous great rock formations, there's always something to keep the mind occupied when away from the main features. The trail constantly changes elevation and rarely gives someone a moment to relax. In terms of photography, I really haven't had much great success at Northern Green. Um, probably your best bet is an early sunrise or late sunset at Wyanoke High Point. Um, there are views of the sun itself. There are views away from the sun if you prefer that. The reservoir looks great in dusk light or dawn light, mainly because it hides some of the um, infrastructure and buildings and roads. Um, I think that's your best bet. I've never been successful at Chickahokee Falls. I don't particularly love the angle for photography. Um, so otherwise, you're really looking for small scenes along the way, whether it's some of those pitch pines or an area of rocky, uh, wispy grass. Um, I've tried those types of shots. While they're fine, um, I've not been able to capture a single keeper here. 
don't let it deter you though it is a wonderful wonderful rugged place um, so maybe just not photography first there aren't many negatives about this hike but we'll talk about a few um, the first is the crowds especially when you're parking at the new Weiss Center and the popularity of Wainoki High Point it can get crowded on weekends um, so if you're looking for solitude try a weekday or very early on a weekend for this video I was on the trail by about 7 45 a.m. and I didn't really see anybody uh, for about four and a half or five miles into the hike so you really can have that solitude if you want it um, just have to work a little bit harder to get there I guess a second negative is this is probably a four star out of five hike when the water is not at full flow and then turns into a full five star at a five hike when the water is at full flow. So don't let that deter you. It's still a great hike in the uh, dry season, um, but at least do yourself a favor and try to get out there once or twice um, in the wet season. It really makes a difference, particularly on this route, which features a lot of water. And finally, I guess the other negative, and this is really nitpicking here, um, this is not a beginner hike. Um, I've been in hiking groups where people have either had to walk out or stop the hike entirely um, to change the route uh, because it really was difficult. So anyone who normally hikes can do this hike no problem, uh, but maybe a beginner that doesn't hike often, um, this wouldn't be a great place to start. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. Don't let that deter you though. If you're a hiker, you can easily take this route without a problem. And I guess as evidence of this, I think it's probably best to think of the hike as 22,000 steps or so, as opposed to seven miles. Um, and if you do the math there at two and a half steps, um, two and a half feet per step, that's probably closer to a hike that feels like 10 miles than seven miles. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I know whenever I'm done with this hike, I definitely feel more tired than any other seven mile hike in the area. And finally, as always, there is a 4K time warp of the full seven mile route uh, link below and above. I have it set to music. I generally like to ride the stationary bike to something like this, or maybe I'm bored one day and I'll throw it on YouTube, uh, casting to my TV, and just enjoy the scenes and music at the same time. All right, so go try this hike today. I have two favorite hikes in New Jersey. It is this one and the second one at Bear Fort Ridge um, in West Milford. I vacillate back and forth between which one I like better. Um, I think for today, I'd say in the rainy season, this is absolutely better than Bear Fort Ridge. But in the dry season, perhaps Bear Fort Ridge has it by a nose. Thank you very much for watching. Go do this hike. Get out and explore.